whatever it was, it was big and... You sure it took him under the air? In this Unreal Engine tutorial series, we'll be creating a smart enemy AI system inspired by the Xenomorph AI from Alien Isolation. To create this enemy AI system, we'll be using Unreal Engine 5's state trees and blueprints. The AI of Alien Isolation is generally celebrated as one of the best implementations of an enemy AI system ever created in video games. Its complexity, unpredictability, and its uncanny intelligence makes it feel like you're actively being hunted by a malevolent predator. The architecture of the Xenomorph's AI is beautifully constructed, but although it is complex, it relies on certain basic fundamental systems that are easily accessible in game engines like Unreal Engine 5. For instance, the Xenomorph AI relies on behavior trees, branching pathways of decisions determined by changing conditions in the game environment. Unreal Engine 5 has behavior tree functionality built into the engine, as well as the newer and more flexible state trees, which we'll be using in this tutorial series. But before we discuss the differences between behavior trees and state trees in Unreal, it will help to understand how behavior trees function in Alien Isolation. A basic example of a behavior tree is where an enemy NPC performs an action based on whether or not it has seen the player. If the player hasn't entered the enemy's line of sight, the decision pathway will branch into behavior A. And when the player does enter the enemy's line of sight, the decision pathway will branch into behavior B, attack the player. This basic decision-making process forms the underlying design of the Xenomorph's behavior tree, with the main difference being its complexity and the many different branches of decisions based on changing conditions in the environment. And thanks to the free Open Cage Mod Toolkit, which we'll discuss shortly, we can actually inspect and investigate the Xenomorph's behavior tree for ourselves. At first glance, the complex branching system of logic pathways in the Xenomorph's behavior tree may seem overwhelming. But on closer inspection, the system is governed by the same simple rules. If the condition is true, perform action A. If the condition is not true, perform action B, or proceed to the next condition check. This may be an oversimplification, but fundamentally, this is how the Xenomorph AI operates. There's no magic behind it, simply an expertly implemented system of condition checks resulting in the appearance of an intelligent threat. Now, Unreal Engine 5 has an inbuilt behavior tree system, so why is this tutorial series going to focus on state trees instead of behavior trees? First of all, what are state trees in Unreal Engine 5? State trees are a newer, more versatile alternative to behavior trees. While behavior trees organize AI decisions in a hierarchical tree structure, state trees take a different approach by organizing AI behaviors into distinct states that an entity can transition between. Think of state trees as being similar to a state machine, like what you might have seen in Unreal Engine's animation blueprints, but with more flexibility and power. With state trees, we have all the benefits of behavior trees, but with greater flexibility and the ability to transition from one state to any other state based on defined rules. With the upcoming release of Unreal Engine 5.6, Epic Games have stated that they will be encouraging developers to use state trees instead of behavior trees for enemy AI implementations, and NPCs included in the new game templates will all be using state trees to drive their behavior. In short, state trees are the future of AI development in Unreal Engine, so this is what we'll be using to build our enemy AI system in this series. In the first tutorial, we'll be going over a beginner's guide to state trees, introducing you to the workflow and how to use them. In the second tutorial, we'll be creating our enemy NPC character, its AI controller, and creating a state tree that will drive basic behavior and movement. In the third tutorial, I'll be introducing how to implement AI perception with state trees, so the enemy can see our player character and change to an attack state. 
In this lesson, I'll be covering sight sense as well as prediction sense. In following videos, we'll be expanding upon the enemy's senses and creating more complex behavior states. We'll also be covering how to use environmental queries to help determine how the enemy decides to move through its environment. As our enemy's behavior becomes more complex and refined, we'll also be exploring more advanced AI topics such as how to get our enemy to plan its attacks, lay in traps for the player, how to make the enemy's behavior unpredictable, and also constructing our own custom EQS actor that will allow the enemy to systematically search, ambush, stalk, and hunt the player in a defined area. To help with your development journey in this tutorial series, I'll be providing the project files completely for free for you to download. I also intend on creating written documentation for each chapter to help with your learning. All of this material will be provided for free, but if you would like to support the work that I do, please consider making a donation via the Buy Me A Coffee link below. Donations aren't required to access the content, but of course any donation you would like to provide to support this work will be greatly appreciated. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to set up the free OpenCage mod toolkit so that we can examine and investigate the enemy AI behavior tree of the Xenomorph AI for Alien Isolation. This will require that you own a copy of Alien Isolation. However, if you don't own a copy of the game, that's okay. We'll still be looking at some of the behavior tree architecture in the video so that you can get an idea of how we might be designing our enemy NPC in the future videos. So if you're ready to start this journey, watch the next video to get started and be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Remember to turn on notifications so that you know when I've published the next video in the series. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Let's get started.